back and happy Monday, everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. Welcome to Weather for Weather Geeks, the Monday evening edition. We're less than two weeks from Christmas, and boy, it's going to be kind of an eventful period, I think, in the lead-up to the holiday this year in contrast to last year and some of our recent years. Uh, this uh, mid-December, late-December period will probably be quite a change of pace. We're going to talk about the longer range, not only in this video, but in many videos this week because of the... Uh, the potential for some extremes, but in the meantime, it has not been a particularly wintry December so far. We're 12 days into the month. At the airport, we've had a paltry 0.2 inches worth of snow, running 4.7 inches behind the average for this month so far. Uh, they did have some snow yesterday, a few hours, several hours to our east. This was enough to make for some slick travel and some, some issues from the Poconos of Northeast PA up through the Catskill Mountains, up into the Hudson Valley around Albany heading over towards the Berkshire Range in Massachusetts. So that was a miss for us. We're going to continue missing out on accumulating snow over the next handful of days. They won't be so lucky out across the High Plains, the Rockies. This is turning into, or it's about to turn into, a bonafide blizzard. Strong area of low pressure scooting out of the front range of the Rockies, and Arctic air is pressing in from the north. And uh, boy, it's going to be a long 24 hours or so in places like Rapid City, uh, around Mount Rushmore, if you've ever been out there, uh, the Black Hills of South Dakota, that's going to be a tough place to be. Over towards Cheyenne in uh, Wyoming and heading down towards uh, areas east of Denver, especially out into the plains of northeastern Colorado. And then winter storm warnings extend as far east as uh, uh, extreme eastern parts of Minnesota. Now, there will be a severe weather component to this storm as it comes east tomorrow and taps into some Gulf moisture. Enhanced risk, level three on a one to five scale. That's the kind of tan color. Eastern Texas, parts of uh, Louisiana, and the broader risk extends up to about Oklahoma City and Tulsa, heading over towards Memphis, and down into New Orleans and Houston as well. Back here at home, ho-hum, kind of a humdrum Monday, a lot of clouds, and we continue to have a thick blanket of clouds overhead this evening, but I am expecting some clearing to take place as we head through the overnight tonight, kind of from northeast to southwest. We should start to see some clearing, and this will make for a better day. Coming up for our Tuesday, it's going to be a seasonable day. We'll see some sunshine. It's not bad at all. Then as we head into the day Wednesday, clouds return. But, you know, if you watched weather for Weather Geeks late last week, we talked about uh, some timing differences on some of the modeling with this midweek system, and I favored the slower modeling. That's a good thing I did because... The moisture looks like it's going to hold off until later Wednesday night with this. So we'll be dry through the daylight hours on Wednesday. But then later Wednesday night, heading into Thursday morning, rain. Now, this could be a little bit tricky for a time. Uh, Thursday, especially in western PA where you see some of these uh, peachy colors. Uh, there could be some sleet. There can be some freezing rain. Do I think it's going to be a big, impactful freezing rain situation? No, that might be reserved for areas a few hours to our east, closer to, say, Dubois, Clearfield, uh, maybe State College, Williamsport, places like that. Uh, as far as our viewing area goes, we're going to see rain, I think, with a lot of places right around 32. That means a lot of major roads should be okay, but some of the colder surfaces, bridges, overpasses, maybe sidewalks, uh, things left untreated, maybe, maybe for a time. Uh, they could be a little bit slick. Again, I'm not looking for huge impacts around here with this, but something we'll have to keep an eye on. Again, by far and away, the better odds of impactful ice, more than, say, a tenth of an inch, maybe up to a quarter of an inch, be east of I-79, heading over towards uh, uh, the kind of mountainous terrain. You know, you, uh, if you, you know if you've traveled east on 80 into Pennsylvania, it gets pretty hilly and mountainous, and you get up to 2,000 feet in uh, some parts of that I-80 corridor around Clearfield, PA. Uh, that's where the most most impactful ice is likely to be. Also for the turnpike, southern parts of PA, uh, heading uh, well southeast of Pittsburgh through some of the hilly terrain, Johnstown, on south, uh, again, towards the PA Turnpike. Uh, it could be problematic for a time on Thursday. But, you know, I don't think snow is going to be much of a story around here in the next week. Now, as we head towards the weekend, there's going to be some flurries in the air, gusty winds, maybe a heavier snow shower in spots, but I think accumulations would be very minor with that. Maybe there's some times when the visibility gets reduced, and maybe there's times when we get little, little coatings, small accumulations here and there that make for some slick spots, especially uh, during the course of uh, Saturday into Saturday night. But again, I'm not expecting much in the way of impactful snow here in the short and medium range. But hey, look at this map. This is the 8 to 14 day outlook. Now, if you've been paying attention to the weather and uh, forecasts and videos like this in recent uh, days, we've been talking about this for a while now, and everything looks on track for a pretty darn cold period uh, in the run-up to Christmas and maybe even beyond Christmas as well. 
Uh, this could end up being, you know, when you look at the nation as a whole, maybe not quite locally, but it could be kind of a close call. But for the nation as a whole, this could be the coldest kind of December 20th through Christmas period that we've had since 2000, uh, 22 years uh, since we've had a period that looks kind of like this across uh, a lot of the country. Now, it's too early to talk about specifics when it comes to pre-Christmas snow, timing, amounts, impacts, all that stuff. Uh, today's only, what, the 12th? Oh, we got a lot of time to figure that out. But with that kind of a cold pattern, uh, it does seem pretty likely that uh, at this point the odds of a white Christmas are likely to be higher than our historical odds. Historically, about four to five Christmases out of ten are white in our area. What we mean by a white Christmas, the most common definition of a white Christmas is an inch or more of snow on the ground. It doesn't have to snow on Christmas Day, but Christmas morning, if there's an inch or more of snow on the ground, that qualifies as a white Christmas. I'm going to put our odds right now at 55%, about 10% above our historical averages. How cold is it going to get? Well, here's just one kind of data set. This is uh, off the European ensemble model, and what we're looking at here is kind of a, a mean or an average of all the different model runs that go into that ensemble. There's 51 different flavors of the European model. And here's a look at the uh, mean. Uh, and so, you know, when you look at these numbers, you know because it's a mean or an average, there's going to be some model runs that are colder than this. But right now, the mean or average, you know, these are daytime highs right around Christmas. This is Christmas Eve right here. High of 22, uh, Christmas Day 24, lows down in the teens. Now, we're not going to take these numbers verbatim. It's an ensemble mean. It could be warmer than this. It could be colder than this. But right now, when you average out all the European ensemble runs, this is what you get. So I think the coldest air might be centered right around or just before Christmas in our area. So again, we haven't had very many cold Decembers or cold Christmases of late. Uh, we haven't had a legitimately cold December and Christmas season since 2017. And it's possible that for our region and for the nation as a whole, this will be the coldest Christmas time, the time around Christmas, uh, since... Uh, that very cold December back in 2000. All right, that's it for me tonight. We'll talk more about uh, the, the Thursday situation and, of course, about next week's uh, eventful weather in Weather for Weather Geeks Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Don't forget Thursday we're going to update the winter forecast on 21 News and right here on Weather for Weather Geeks. So uh, I hope you'll tune in then.